God gathers us as a beachcomber gathers and marvels at every precious surviving piece of glass she finds. We are never alone. We are never lost to the one who seeks humanity's wholeness. We affirm our commitment to be the body of Christ that knows we cannot be personally healed until we see the interconnected community as part of the process of healing. Jesus has the power to revision the family of God which false boundaries are overcome. In a year of devastating loss of livelihood, we consider the economic health that reimagines status quo. Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, renew our holy vessels, which include the communities of which we are a part. Let us pray. God of all, you created us for each other. You set us in us a yearning for companionship and empathy that binds us together, protecting each other and delighting in one another. Yet too often we have broken down our relationships instead of building them up. We have been set against one another with the lie of scarcity. We have built systems and economies that widen the gap of resources rather than safeguarding equitable practices. Too many and growing numbers are suffering hardship, food insecurity, joblessness, we cannot fathom the proportions of loss, and so we look away, sometimes even from the need in our own community. Help us, healer. Show us our empathy. Forgive our complacence. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Again this week, I invite you to imagine a warmth begin to rise within the core of your body. It may help to keep your eyes closed. This warm orb of light is deep within you, a flame always there and ready when you need it. This warm glow begins to emerge from the recesses of your inner being to fill and flood your whole body until your skin is glowing with it, radiating outward. This warmth that wraps you as a blanket of assurance is one you want to share. You want all to feel this presence, to kindle this hope. Know this. This love and security is meant for all people, no matter what. We are capable of sharing our light and not running out of enough. Christ's hospitality that broke through false boundaries points the way. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you and breathe out with the relief of insurance.
I invite you to imagine the warmth that surrounds you extending to those who may be next to you in close proximity. Imagine it extending beyond your walls to the neighborhood, to the wider community, the church. And seeing it spread like the rising sun, let it expand to all the world. Let this be our peace. Amen. If you've not already, I invite you to open your eyes as we share this peace. The peace of Christ is with you. We will continue by singing the hymn, Community of Christ. Hear a contemporary word. There is no power for change greater than a community discovering what it cares about. Margaret J. Wheatley. In every community there is work to be done. In every nation there are wounds to heal. In every heart there is a power to do it. Marianne Williamson. The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate action of its members. Coretta Scott King. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do much. Helen Keller. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community and as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. George Bernard Shaw. I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. And here, an ancient word as it comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, the 8th chapter, verses 5 through 13. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, in terrible distress, 
And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. If I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from the east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. When I talked about the fact that a lot of the imagery and the theme of tonight's service was going to focus on beachcombing, uh, Abby reminded me that back in the days of our courtship when we would take walks along uh, the shoreline on Lake Michigan, she would occasionally pick up things that had washed ashore. I remembered it being more in the way of driftwood, but she also reminded me that on occasion she would also pick up bits of what they refer to as sea glass that happened to wash up on the shore. I don't know if she ever kept much of that. I don't think we have any of that left today, but it did remind me that that uh, used to be a part of the routine during those walks. And as I was hunting up for a place to uh, buy sea glass for tonight's worship service, I uh, stumbled across a craft shop over in Sheboygan, which carried it. And I went over there and asked the owner of the store how she got into the whole business of beach combing, and she said, well, she didn't have much time for it anymore now that she's got the store to run, but for a period of about 20 years or so, she would take walks along the shore at Lake Michigan. And I asked her, was there any rhyme or reason to what you happened to pick up? Was there any particular kind of sea glass that you were interested in? And she said, no, I picked up whatever I found there. And in another sidebar conversation I had with somebody who knew what I was up to this evening, I discovered something about that individual that I had not known before. Uh, but she said that in the years following her divorce, she made a habit of walking by the lakeshore and picking up bits of sea glass. And she said that she felt in some way that helped her to visualize, helped her to connect to all the trauma that she had been in during the breakup of that relationship and the decision to leave that relationship. And she said that like the sea glass, she felt she was being uh, reworked, smoothed out by the abrasions of the water and became a different new creation as a result, and I thought, well, that was, that was a fitting thing. I'll ask you this question, though. Have you ever known a beachcomber who, instead of hunting for driftwood or pieces of sea glass along the shore of a body of water, has hunted for people instead? I can say that I actually knew somebody like that, an old friend of mine back in high school. In fact, I think I was probably one of those persons that uh, she collected as part of her menagerie. Now, there wasn't anything strange or untoward about that. Uh, she was one of those persons who tended to attract people to herself. And she wasn't, by any stretch of the imagination, uh, the most popular person in the class, although I can't remember anybody not liking her. But she had this ability to attract, bring different people into her collection of friends. And 
I think that's how I got involved. I was sort of collected as part of the menagerie. And it was an interesting menagerie. Now, mind you, our, our friend was a very unique individual. And she was very comfortable in being a very unique individual. And I think she chose people to be part of that menagerie who were also unique. And I think she also encouraged those people that were part of that collection uh, to be comfortable in their uniqueness as well. And believe me, that is not an easy commodity to find when you're in high school. Somebody who is comfortable in themselves and encourages other people in their orbit to be comfortable with them. And so it was. It took me a long time to, to, to pick up on that because you know, I'm not always the most perceptive person and I certainly was much less perceptive back in the time when I was in high school. But it dawned on me that this is what was happening. And when a bunch of us in that menagerie, that collection, would go up in the hallway in front of Ms. Felzo's room on the second floor to eat our lunch rather than sit in the cafeteria, I knew I was hanging around with and eating with people that I would not have normally hung around with or ate with, except for the fact that we all had this one friend in common. And it began to dawn on me that if she saw value in worth in these people, then they must have had some value and worth. And I would hope in turn that they had seen the same things in me. She was a beachcomber for people and collected them as part of that menagerie. And you know what? Jesus was a beachcomber for people as well, collected all kinds of persons in that menagerie of friends and, and fellow travelers that were part of who he was, the disciples, persons that he ate bread with, fellowshiped with. You know, sometimes they were the righteous, and sometimes they were people who had done some very bad things in their lives. Sometimes they were persons in positions of power, and other times they were persons of no power and no position. Sometimes they were of the elect and chosen of Israel, and other times they belonged to the nations. And Jesus had this habit of collecting people, gathering souls, as a beachcomber might look for driftwood or sea glass on the seashore. And in our lesson today, in the, in the ancient word, we see that while Jesus is in Capernaum, a Roman centurion approaches him and asks him to heal his servant who is paralyzed and close to the point of death. And when Jesus is faced with this request, he says, I will come and heal him. Uh, even though this guy is an outsider, he's a Gentile, he's one of the hated Romans, uh, Jesus said he would come and go to the man's house. But the centurion didn't think that was necessary, didn't really find himself to be worthy of such an extravagant gesture of concern. He said, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. I am a person under authority, and I have people under me. If I say to one of my soldiers, go, he'll go. If I say, send and fetch this, he'll send and fetch this. If I say to one of my servants, go and do this, the man will do this. It's enough if you simply say the word, I know it will be, will be done. I know it will happen. And Jesus marveled at the man's faith. He said, nowhere amongst the people in the house of Israel have I seen faith such as this. And he said to the crowds, probably disbelieving, shocked, maybe even angry at what Jesus had just done, he said, there will be people from the east and the west, referring to the people of the nations, the Gentiles, who will be eating with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom. And to the centurion, he says simply, go. 
Your servant has been healed. Jesus has this amazing habit of collecting persons. Persons who have washed up on the shore of life. Sometimes they're powerful people, sometimes they aren't. Sometimes they've had checkered pasts. Sometimes they're the righteous, but Jesus collects them. And that's the one bit of news tonight I think we should take heart at, is that, that God's work is the work of beachcombing for souls. That each and every one of us here is worthy of God's love and God's attention. That each and every one of us here is worthy of God's safe keeping. Certainly in these last months, we have been through a tremendous amount of upheaval. Our lives have been turned and buffeted by all kinds of circumstances. We may indeed feel like we have been a beach glass that has been worn by the waves, by the forces of nature, and have washed up on the shore. Not certain what will happen next. But the divine beachcomber comes and collects us up. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of safekeeping. That is the word that comes to us this evening. The divine beachcomber is looking for us to gather us up and to keep us safe. We are not alone. We are not beyond redemption or collection. We will belong in God's safekeeping. So may we take heart in this. May we take joy that uh, God has not forgotten, but that God relentlessly searches out for all that have washed up, that all may be a part of that menagerie. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer. Healer of every ill, especially our malady of separation and fear, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. As broken pieces scattered and separated, we trust that you are seeking us, gathering us into wholeness, and calling us to join you in the quest. We pray especially for those who have experienced the loss of livelihoods and economic security and are feeling helpless to care for their families. We pray for those whose businesses have gone under or are on the precipice between survival or closure. We pray for those whose disparity of resources has been made even more pronounced during this pandemic. We pray grateful thanks for all the efforts of all who have been searching for solutions 
and have given generously for months of their time and resources to alleviate the suffering of those they know and do not know. We ask for encouragement and passion to reevaluate how we as a church can help now and into the future. And we pray this day for the following concerns which have come to us online. And gracious God, we lift up before you those petitions that we bring to you in the silence of our hearts. For all of the things that we have lifted up before you aloud, for all of the things we have brought before you in the silence of our hearts, we ask in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The words of Jesus we have heard in this week's healing story were, I will come. When faced with a request, Jesus makes a move to seek out, to come help one who was previously seen to be outside of help's embrace. He moves outward to gather in and heal someone unlikely to have crossed his path otherwise. All are within God's circle of safekeeping. I have brought a collection of broken pieces of sea glass, which I will empty into the bowl. I invite you to look at the bowl and its contents. And as you do so, think about the people you have encountered or you've heard about in the last few months who are suffering from lack of support. What could we do to reach out and focus on healing to parts of the human community that we don't spend enough time thinking about? To what part of our community will we say, I will come? And then as you reflect on the bowl of glass, think about your own need to be cared for What do you feel you need to be safe? 
What connections do you need to strengthen, to heal any isolation that you may feel? If you are in need of something, consider this as an invitation to let someone know what you need without feeling embarrassment or shame about it. Jesus invites us always to ask. Take a moment to reflect on the broken pieces in the container and invite that spirit to live and move with you in a special way to strengthen you and your connection to others and your role in making someone's life more safe. Brittany, I'll do the offering first. Okay. <laughs> it is not a casual act for us to relate God's work with our money. Hear these words of Jesus as they come to us in this hour, in this moment, as we offer up our gifts, our tithes, our offerings. Hear the words of Jesus from Mark chapter 8, verses 35 to 36. For whoever would save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake and for the gospel's will save it. For what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? We'll continue with our response in the doxology. heads as we prepare to dedicate these gifts. Loving God, we believe that you are always listening. Hear now this prayer of your hungry people. We have filled our plates with the fast food and the junk food of this world and have neglected the bread which would satisfy. We want to be at your table with the people of God. May these offerings, gifts, and tithes bring us closer to the table of worship. And we ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll now continue by singing the voice of God is calling.
Jesus' healing actions often get buzzed from onlookers. In this week's story, we do not know how his followers reacted to his words, but we can assume that it was hard to hear for some. Jesus makes sure to point out that the belief of this outsider and his care for his servant was something he didn't always see from the insiders, from the ones who professed to be faithful. His words no doubt affirmed some and offended others. That's what happens when we get called out, as we say. Perhaps we are in need of being called out, not in a way that shames, but in a way that energizes. How could our faith call us out more and more until we cannot stand by as some are suffering? As it was said last week, we are working on healing for ourselves in this season, but we are also working towards something communal. How can we as a church community become a health hub through our ministry and mission? The needs are so great, especially now. Throughout this time, I invite you to explore with us the possibilities for a new or renewed commitment to a contribution we can make at Salem Church to our larger community's effort to recover from this past year. And now hear these words of blessing. Now go with confidence that the holy beachcomber is gathering us all for safekeeping recovering our depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, I will come. And may the Spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. May the people of God say, Amen.